With NFL star Sean Taylor's family praying he would survive the night, the cops turned to the one person who was actually there when Sean was gunned down, his fiance, Jack. As they began to leave the hospital, we started bringing family to the office so they can be interviewed. And we interviewed Jackie to help try to piece everything together. The whole thing to me was very, very unnerving. What Jackie's telling us, to me, it was like the typical kind of horror story. Sean Taylor and his girlfriend and their young child go to bed on November 25th, 2007. Sean hears a noise. He wakes up. He's like, hey, someone's in the house. Sean tells his girlfriend to get under the covers with the baby. And he pulls out a machete from under the bed. And just as he's going to the bedroom door, next thing she hears is a loud bang. Ironically, Sean Taylor was not even supposed to be home that night. Sean was home in Miami because the week before, uh, he got hurt in the game. So I guess he figured he'd come home and spend time with baby Jackie and Jackie. He flew down and he didn't tell anyone, you know. He sort of just came down on his own. No leads, no suspects. But then, a major clue. The cops find out Sean's shooter may have been inside his house before. A week before Sean was shot, his house was broken into. Someone had come into his home, ransacked everything, looked through the drawers, tampered with the safe. Sasha noticed that the house had been burglarized. We all lived in Sean's house at that time. And I came home, and all the lights were on. All our things were everywhere. Everything was dumped out as if somebody went through the house. And there was like a large butcher's knife left on my bed. She called, you know, my mother. She called all of us and uh, told us that the house had been broken into. And our first thoughts were, hey, leave the house. Let us call the police and figure out what's going on, but just leave the house. Sean, Jackie, and the baby were not in the house during that burglary. There was nobody else home that night. Because I was by myself. I didn't want to sleep in my bed anymore. I didn't want to even be in the house. The police look at the knife. They realize that it's a knife that actually belonged to Sean. And they don't have any suspects or leads at that point. And it also appears that the person didn't take anything. So whatever they were looking for, they weren't able to find it. Once we learn of the knife, now we have to try to determine, was this burglary related to the shooting? Did the person that shot Sean know that he was going to be coming home? Is this something personal? Is this somebody that's maybe stalking Sean Taylor and his family? It just added more possibilities.